In this topic, we would like to focus on open access publishing and new developments related to publishing scientific results. Some very positive, but some also very questionable and even illegal. Let's start with the main concepts and ideas behind open access publishing. Under the traditional publishing model, the reader or institution pays a fee to a publisher for access to the content of its journal or journals. Now, under the open access publishing model, most importantly, public publications are freely available for any reader and there is no paywall or price barrier which can make it difficult for scientists, readers, as well as the general public to have access to new and critical information published in the open access articles. Open access is also compatible with copyright regulations, publications are usually peer reviewed and in line with prestige or quality expectations. Most open access journals are also indexed on PubMed and other established literature platforms. But if it is free for readers without any subscription fee, what is the business model behind open access publishing? In general, the business model is based on the so-called author processing charge, which are fees to cover the publishing costs paid by the authors of a scientific publication. Often the author processing charge fee is paid by research institutions or is part of the funding budget when applying for new grants, as there is an increasing number of funders making it a requirement the generated research outcomes from funded projects are published in open access journals so that the scientific community and public society has direct access to this new data. There is not only one type of open access publishing, but in fact several different types and variations exist and are described or differentiated by a certain color scheme. The two most common types are called gold or green open access publishing. In the gold open access model, articles and contents related to them can be accessed at no cost on the journal's website. Gold open access articles are licensed under Creative Commons licenses, which means they can be freely distributed and shared so that other people can build their work based on them. The green open access model enables authors to archive their own work on a website controlled by them or their funder or on an independent repository like BioArchive. The deposited version of the article may or may not be final. Unlike the gold model of open access, in case of the green open access model, some journals demand an embargo period, which may vary from six to 12 months or even more than one year, before authors get the permission to self-archive their work. Other open access color schemes and business models vary based on the APC charge, who pays the APC, the timeline for openness and the licenses available. For example, for the open access bronze model, the content is free to read and or download on the publisher's website, but it is not published under an open license that permits sharing or reuse. The publisher can withdraw access at any time. This type is often used to make content free to read for only a brief time period. Diamond open access refers to open access journals that are free for readers to access and for authors to publish in. Since they do not charge either readers or authors directly, these journals are often community driven and supported by institutions or by national or regional infrastructure. Hybrid open access refers to when an article processing charge is paid for an individual journal article to be, to be made open access in an otherwise subscription journal. This type of open access always has an APC associated with it. And these APCs are usually higher than for fully open access journals. Finally, black open access refers to providing illegal open access to information without any permission from journals or publishing houses. To enable open science and open publishing, many interest groups and communication stakeholders, including researchers, libraries, information service organizations, publishers, funders, and universities or research institutions, will need to coordinate their efforts. 
All stakeholders should in theory be motivated to ensure a sustainable development of open science with a proper protection of intellectual property. But these stakeholders have certainly different priorities as summarized here. For example, scientists are interested in efficient workflows and increased collaborations, but also need to think about their reputation and the next steps in their career. Libraries want to offer optimized sets of resources and practices for their users, while publishers need to sustain their business, so far based on a very successful subscription fee model, and need to maintain or increase their attractiveness for customers by offering quality and value-adding services. In other words, open access requires an effort from the entire community and critically depends on all of us understanding the benefits of open access publishing. Let's look at the benefits provided by the open access publishing model. First, more visibility and exposure. Studies have shown that open access articles are viewed and cited more often than articles behind a paywall. Greater public engagement. The content of scientific publications is now available to the public and those who can't access subscription content, including scientists in developing countries. Increased interdisciplinary conversation. Open access journals that cross multiple disciplines help researchers connect more easily and providing greater visibility of their research. Wider collaboration. Open access publications and data enable researchers to carry out collaborative research on a global scale. Faster impact. With permissive licenses like the Creative Commons licenses, researchers are empowered to build on existing research quickly and can consider any new and relevant findings immediately. Compliance with grant rules and open access mandates. Open access journals comply with major funding policies internationally. It must be admitted that there are also challenges of open access publishing and issues to be resolved. First of all, authors may desire or face pressure to publish in certain journals that are perceived as more prestigious in order to advance their careers. But these journals may not offer open access options or offer only expensive open access options. Secondly, authors might struggle to cover the cost of publishing open access, which can be a significant additional financial burden. Managing open research and publishing workflows requires additional resources, infrastructure and time. What we will discuss in a minute is that authors and readers can also be challenged by so-called predatory journals, which are low quality, fully open access journals that do not follow accepted norms, such as peer review or committee on publication ethics guidelines, or are in, not indexed by the directory of open access journals. Finally, publishers are challenged to create a new and sustainable business model which can support open access while maintaining the quality of peer review, publication, and value-added services to the research communities. Reflecting the obvious benefits to open access publishing for both authors and readers, there are now hundreds of new open access journals being set up by reputable publishers. However, this rise in popularity has also opened the door to less respectable so-called predatory journals that are abusing the author pay model and putting the integrity of published research at risk. Predatory journals are scam publishers that charge authors fees upfront but do not provide the service they promise. The majority of these predatory journals publish articles without any form of an editorial or peer review process. These journals will often have professional looking websites, list accredited editorial teams and advertise their memberships to professional organizations that promote publishing best practices. Many predatory journals tend to send out spam-like emails asking individuals to submit their articles 
or invitations to become a member of their editorial team. Just to give you an example of how widespread the issue around predatory publishing is, John Bohannon from Science created multiple versions of a credible looking scientific paper, which included such grave and obvious errors that any peer reviewer should easily identify these papers as flawed, fraudulent and unpublishable. He then submitted the manuscripts to over 300 open access journals. As a result, some manuscripts are still under review and some websites did not respond at all. One third rejected this manuscript as they needed to do. But over 150 journals, so over 50% accepted his paper, which demonstrates an appalling lack of peer review and quality control at the journals John Bohannon spoofed. So how can you spot and identify a predatory journal? Here we have listed a few tips and tricks. Always check the website thoroughly. Often quite obvious signs of a predatory journal are the mistakes in both spelling and grammar on their website. Poor use of language shows a low professional standard. Check if the journal is a member of COPE or similar organizations. These associations are all reputable organizations that vet their members for adherence to publishing standards. Links to these organizations can be found in the additional reading material list. Check the journal's contact information. It is important to ensure there is verifiable contact information that matches the advertised nationality of the journal. The contact email address may be non-professional and non-journal affiliated, for example, at yahoo.com. Research the editorial board. One way to look credible is to list experts in the field as members of the editorial board. Often predatory journals will create fake scholars or they will list scholars without their permission. Take a look at their peer review process and publication timelines. If the journal advertises exceptionally quick peer review timelines, investigate them further and check if they state their peer review policy in full online. Read through past issues of the journal. Many predatory journals will publish any and all articles that are submitted to them. Read through past issues of the journal and see whether the articles published are true to the journal's advertised focus areas. Think, Check, Submit is a new campaign led by multiple publishing organizations to try and raise awareness of predatory journals. Its aim is to remind authors to think carefully before submitting their research and to follow the steps shown here so that you can have as much confidence as possible in your choice of the journal and publication vehicle. 